This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. And this one comes from Greg. Greg asks, having read about horrific crimes and so on attributed to Marxists like Mao or Stalin or others, Pol Pot in Cambodia and so on, what do I have to say about that is basically what he's asking. What do we do in in the face of people wondering about that? And I think the wondering is perfectly legitimate and the question likewise. Well, the first thing to start with, to be honest, is to admit, yes, there have been people who say they are Marxists, who follow Marx's writings, at least they say so, and there's evidence that they do, and have done horrific things. Yep, there are those people, they have done all of that, and there's no denying it, and I'm not about to deny it. But I'm also not about to avoid the explanation. Marxism is a thing, a way of thinking, a way of acting, Uh, that dates from Karl Marx. And Marx died in 1883. So we've got about a hundred and almost 150 years since Marx's death, during which his ideas, his ways of thinking, he never was in a government official, so he never had any power, but he did have an enormous influence with his ideas. And they spread around the world in what is, in historical time, record speed. In literally a few decades, his ideas became part of the culture of every country on this planet. There are Marxist political parties, Marxist newspapers, Marxist academic institutions, Marxist labor unions. I mean, all kinds of things all over the world. Any set of ideas that spreads across the world that quickly interacts with very different cultures, different politics, different economics, wherever it spreads. And everybody doesn't make the same interpretation of these ideas. How could they? They're all different people with different histories and different conditions. Bottom line, Many people have interpreted Marx in radically different ways. Some in ways I think you would recognize as very positive. For example, many of the reforms of capitalism have been fought for by Marxists or Marxist labor unions or Marxist political uh, parties. I'll give you an example. Just pick one at random. In France, a country I know well because of my family, there's a law on the books. And the law goes like this. Whenever you start your working life, graduating from high school or college, your employer, public or private, must give you five weeks paid vacation as a necessary part of a balance between your life and your work. Now, I think most people would agree that is an incredibly positive benefit, certainly exceeds what exists in the United States, which has no such law. That was fought for by labor unions and political parties inspired by Marx. And I could give you many more interpretations. So what I would say is, There's no denying that some of the people interpreted Marx in ways that they thought justified horrific acts. But many other people interpreted Marxism as something that justified and motivated very positive social acts. And not only is that true for Marxism, it's true for everything else like Marxism, other movements that had to do with ways of thinking. I'm going to pick a couple just to drive the point home. Let's start with Christianity, something that developed many centuries ago as a movement, a way of thinking about man and life and women and God and all these important questions. Christianity has a way of understanding what those are and how they connect. 
one to the other. But there were some people who interpreted Christianity, their concepts of God and people and all that, in ways I think most of us now call horrific. Sort of like what Mao and, you know, Stalin, folks like that are said to have done and in some cases did. There's the Spanish Inquisition that killed large numbers of people because they weren't Christian in the manner of the Roman Catholic Church at that time. If you study history, you'll study things like the Thirty Years' War in Europe. These were wars between Protestants and Catholics, part of the history. Both sides were doing what they thought God called them to do, which was to slaughter one another. The colonialism in which European countries that were Christian and said so took over large parts of Asia and Africa, causing massive death and destruction in the name of God as they understood it. Do we reject Christianity because it justified and rationalized many of those actions? Well, I don't think so. And to be blunt and use a current example, the war in the Ukraine pits one set of Christians against another set of Christians, and both of them affirm their Christianity as part of why they are warring with one another. Well, I mean, something there is amiss. I think we're able to say that Christianity is interpreted in different ways by different people, and in many cases has been used to justify what we now see as horrific acts. And it's true in the Muslim religion, it's true in the Jewish religion, and all the rest of them. But we don't, in general, reject those religions totally by identifying them only with those stories, those interpretations that are linked to awful actions. The worst war in human history, as far as I know, is World War I. It killed tens of millions of people. All of the countries that went to war, Germany, the United States, Britain, France, called themselves and were in many ways Christian countries. The resurgence of, of anti-Semitism and white supremacy in parts of the American Midwest and South are often linked to people who also claim they are fundamentalist Christians and that this in some way is linked to what they feel about other races or whatever they call it. We can deplore these connections, but to use them to dismiss an entire way of thinking is really unjustified and you can see that when you notice that the people who do that do it selectively to some traditions and not to others. If interventions like these strike you as reasonable and interesting and ought to be out there, please partner with us. Share these videos. If you're interested in this kind of work, go to our website, democracyatwork.info. Sign up for our newsletter. You will be informed of all the things we do without a bevy of emails. And of course, if you can help us with some financial support, that would be appreciated as well. Thank you.